Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Great Big Plugin Show. My name is Mark Abrams. I'm the uh, content manager over at PureMix, and I do a bunch of live stream stuff, and it's really fun. And today, we are going to be reviewing a plugin called The Spirit from Cradle.app. They are famous for their recent release called The God Particle in conjunction with Jason Joshua, and today's also has a featured artist uh, associated with it. So we're going to check that out in a minute. But before we do, I have to ask you guys for all the YouTube stuff. Do the things up there with the subscribe buttons and whatnot and all the dings and all that. Um, for To be serious, uh, the subscribers do help us keep this kind of content going. So please do ring the bells and, and subscribe and tell your friends and whatnot. So uh, before we jump in here, we have a couple announcements to go through. And the first of which is... We have a new update for Decibel. So if you are a PureMix Pro member, you guys have access to all the process.audio plugins and some other stuff from all of our plugin partners. But we just released a new update for Decibel today, and there's now a spectrogram module inside of it, which is awesome. And there's support for Dolby Atmos with layouts up to 7.1.4, which is crazy and awesome. And it saves looking at the render a lot. So... If you're doing Atmos, make sure you check out that and also the new spectrogram. So, okay, without further ado, let's jump into our plugin of the day. And here's the website for it with a very fancy video up top. This is called The Spirit. And what it is, uh, from my understanding of it, is a vocal channel strip developed in conjunction with Lewis Bell. And the idea is that you get a very, very... Uh, inspiring sounding vocal uh, from the you know from dump uh, with a very little amount of tweaking on it. So uh, there's a bunch of modules inside of it. We're gonna check them all out. First, we'll kind of like scroll through the through the site a little bit and see what we have. So going down below the awesome looking box, we've got Lewis Bell. So it's uh, off often sitting at the top of the multiple charts. Lewis Bell is one of the most successful songwriters, producers, and composers of the 21st century. Good job, Lewis. Uh, so he's worked with Justin Bieber, Halsey, Post Malone, and Taylor Swift. Okay, cool. So we're going to come back to that later. Um, there's a certain kind of genre defined inside of that, and it's going to be important when we actually dig in here. So uh, by capturing emotive and authentic performances, Lewis's vocal production and songwriting have helped him define modern pop music as we know it. All right. So here's here's the plugin. They've got some some different demos on the site. Uh, it's an inspiring vocal chain. They've got built-in reverb and doubler effects. There's an auto writer and zero latency. Okay, cool. And we got some video stuff. Any vocal, anytime, anywhere. So they are saying in here, uh, college dorms, basements, hotel suites, backstage rooms, the modern day vocal booth can take on all shapes and sizes. That's true. The spirit was designed for all environments, allowing you and the artist to stay focused on the creative process. Okay, so um, they're kind of saying that this will help deal with poor recording environments. So we'll have to keep that in mind as we go. And yeah. Uh, easy to use UI, a whole suite of tools. All right, there's some more, some more stuff. Don't break a sweat. All that awesome, and it looks like it's on sale for Black Friday. Seventy nine, seventy nine dollars. I was gonna say seventy nine ninety nine, but I think it's just seventy nine dollars. Uh, that ends December fourth, so if you're watching this video later, it might be too late. I don't know, but they do have a trial, so that's good. All right, let's jump into some Pro Tools action here. And I've got the plugin pulled up. Uh, so couple, couple quick things, couple disclaimers, all that stuff. I have been in contact with Cradle. Um, we are working on some uh, potential stuff for the pure mixers. And uh, just to be completely open and honest about it, they did hook me up with an NFR of this. I told them I'd love to try it out for the plugin show. So uh, thank you, Cradle, for having us check it out. Uh, I am gonna still like give, give my, you know, not really like, I don't give a ton of opinions because I think that most things have a use somewhere. So there's not going to be like a whole lot of, you know, negative talk no matter what we find here. But um, yeah, I, I will still be honest about what I'm hearing and all of that stuff despite all of that. So uh, there's our disclaimer for the whole thing. And 
in terms of how familiar I am with this, I uh, loaded it up over the weekend and threw it up on a vocal in a track I was working on, was surprised by what I was hearing and wound up um, just saying like, I need to come back to this because there's a lot going on under the hood. And I went and finished that mix with some other stuff, but came back to it this morning, listened to it a little bit more just so I could figure out what's going on here and be able to kind of show you guys what it is. And then we'll talk um, about what you're hearing after that. So as we're going over in the live chat, you guys are going to be doing this with me. That's the whole fun of doing a plug-in show on a live stream. I want to hear your guys' opinions, how you're feeling about it. All of that stuff is going to be showing up in our chat screen. So it'll be a part of the video. So you guys are you guys are on camera with me. So help me out and uh, let me know what you guys think. You can also let me know as we're going through if you want to hear it on something in particular. Just say like, let's hear it on guitar or let's hear it on drums. I've got a couple different sessions loaded up inside of here uh, that we can listen to it on a bunch of different things. So if there's something you're curious about it being on, we'll check that out too. So back over to Pro Tools. Let me go over here. Back over to Pro Tools. Right now I have a song pulled up called Light Shine Through. And this is from a start to finish that we did with Ill Factor um, and Jimmy Douglas. And it's more of a pop thing. As I was kind of reading through the, the website, it, you know, with things like Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, Post Malone, it kind of tells me, you know, given Lewis's background and, and his credits, that this is a plugin that's geared toward pop music. So that's what we're going to start out with. And then we're going to try it on some other stuff as we go, too, because I think that's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, hey to everybody in the chat. What's up, Targington? Isomatic. Prime time. Welcome back. G Chad. We got Christianus. Awesome guys. All right. Um, so let's start out. I'm just going to play this vocal in bypass and this track is not mixed. So I just kind of have the multi-track pulled up. I've done a little bit of balancing just to make sure it doesn't blow you guys out. But for the most part, this track is not mixed, which I think is cool for the, for our purposes here. So let's just take a listen to the first verse. Okay, so we have a very dry vocal uh, that was recorded with some compression. It sounds like there's some auto-tune baked into it, and uh, that's how a lot of things come in. So I think that this is going to be pretty pretty useful regardless of that. So I'm going to start all the way at the left side of the plugin, and it starts out with this rider section. So up at the top, we've got some meters. And this is similar to the God Particle, if you guys have seen that. They have an input section with a target to hit. So most of these modules that follow thereafter, they've got a sweet spot that they want to see a hit in order for it to perform the way that they mean for it to perform. So um, let's just take a listen here and we'll make sure that we're hitting in that target area. Okay, cool. All looks well. So let's pop open the rider section here. And to do that, you can bypass it by hitting the button. And then it looks like there's a little arrow here. And I've got some parameters. So I've got speed, amount, floor. So the rider, if anybody's ever seen anything like Waves Vocal Rider, this is going to be in the same vein. It's The idea is for it to kind of automate the vocal as you go. Um, it's dynamics control. So this surprised me when I first saw it because it's dynamics control leading into a dynamics processor, which is the compressor that comes next in the chain. So that's an interesting take on it. Let's see if we can get something cool happening with the rider. I'm going to bypass it first and just listen for fluctuations in the vocal. Again, this vocal is compressed. Uh, I have another example a little later that we'll, we'll probably hear some more of this effect on, but let's check it out. Okay, so on these woes in my mind, you can kind of hear them trail off a little bit at the end. So here we go again one more time with the rider bypass. From the weight of these woes in my mind. 
And let's just turn the rider on and see what we get here. So I'm going to start with the default settings. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Okay. First thing that jumped out to me more than worrying about the volume compensation was um, the consonant sounds. So the F, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, one more time. From the weight of these woes in my mind. And that breath is pretty big too. So down at here we have, uh, we have speed, amount, and floor. So I'm going to mess with the floor and let's find a target on the meters as this is going. It's, uh, if you can see, there's a red line when I move this knob on the input meter. So let's just move that around and see if we get something more pleasing. From the weight of these woes in my mind. So tired. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Floor's pretty high. It's kind of where we were. So I'm gonna take the amount all the way down and actually I'm gonna crank it all the way up so we can hear everything that this thing is doing. Get my little selection back here. Here we go. From the weight of these woes in my mind. And let's try and just slow it down a little bit and see if we can get rid of the consonants. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Nope, let's go the other way. From the weight of I'm just going to stick in the middle and then let's bring this up a little bit. And I'm just, again, I'm listening at the very end of the phrase, just where he trails off. Let's see if we can even that out. Okay, so here's where we were. Where we are. All right, and let's listen to a little bit of a longer passage here. We'll, uh, we'll go from this phrase through here. It looks like there's some more dynamics up ahead. So here we go. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Yeah. How will we get by? All right, so it sounds a little bit more like a compact package to me. It's interesting that we're kind of prepping it for the compressor. So... I think it's, you know, it's riding. Let's go into the compressor. So I'm going to turn this guy on and let's see what happens. Wake up so tired from the weight of these woes in my mind. Yeah. How will we get by when the lights out and the streets are on fire? Okay. So two things. One, the most important is the visual uh, because, you know, it's audio. We've got to do it with our eyes. Um, I love the, uh, the meters on here. It looks like a little smiley face with the eyes getting bigger as it goes. I don't know. I think that that's great. <laughs> um, now, on the less important part of it, the audio portion of it, kidding, of course, but... Uh, I immediately heard uh, a big dip in the low mids and kind of a mid-range bump sort of thing happen. And this is the thing, like when I, when I threw it up on the vocal I was working on over the weekend, I, it was such a drastic change um, that I was, I was pretty, pretty taken back and I had to um, just say like, I have to come back to this because there's a lot going on there. Um, and for that particular song, I, didn't, I wanted a thick vocal. I didn't want... Um, I didn't want to have something like high passed off and scooped at all. So uh, let's listen again, just with these are the stock settings. Let's just listen to the compressor again. Here we go. Wake up so tired from the weight of Here's no compression. Wake up so tired from the weight of Compression. And then here's the entire plug-in bypass. Wake up so tired from the weight of these woes in my 
one more time with the plug-in in. Okay, so I'm hearing a ton of stuff here. The, the big things that are sticking out to me, I've got more breath noise, I've got more consonants, the Fs, the lip smacks, all of that stuff is up as it would be with a more compressed vocal. Uh, and I've got a huge tone change in that vocal. Now, going back to what they said on their uh, website here, which let me go back to see it. If we go back up to... Lewis's credits and look at the Justin Bieber, um, Halsey, Post Malone, Taylor Swift. If you think about the sound of those vocals, it's kind of this. Um, so it's it's pretty interesting. I think that in a lot of ways they've they've nailed uh, exactly what like when I think of a Post Malone vocal, this is the sound I hear. So that's on there. Um, going back to Pro Tools here. There we go. Uh, we've got a couple knobs on this compressor. So I've got the compression knob, which at noon is at its default, and then I've got a focus knob. So focus, uh, we're going to have to see what happens here. I'm going to turn the compression all the way down, and let's see what happens. So I'm going to take the compressor out first, and then we'll bring it in again. Here we go. Wake up so tired. And with the compressor back in. Wake up so tired. Okay, I've got no, well, I've got the threshold really low, assuming it's a threshold, just minus 50. Um, and I'm not seeing my little smiley face meters move. So I still hear the EQ. Let's see if that's happening in the focus. So I'm going to take the focus and just bring it all the way down. As a reminder, here's no compressor. Wake up so tired. Now with the compressor. Wake up so, tired. so there's an EQ stage that's happening before any sort of dynamics is going on. Anything that these two knobs are doing, there's EQ that's happening before all of that. Not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a thing to be aware of. So let's bring our focus back up to default and I'm just gonna start bringing in compression. Here we go. Reminder, here's bypass. From the weight of these woes in my mind. And unbypassed. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Okay, so it's doing a very particular character of compression. Um, I haven't gone into the focus yet. When I started going up higher than this, I didn't like how all of the breath stuff was coming up. The consonants were coming out pretty heavy on this particular vocal, which has already been compressed, and it's going through our rider. So two things to note there. So let's find out what's going on with the plug-in, or with the uh, focus knob, and then we'll move from there. And I already have some thoughts um, about where this is useful. So here we go. Focus. I'm going to go all the way left and then we'll go extreme all the way right just to hear what's happening. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Yeah. How will we get by when the lights out and the streets are on fire? From the weight of these woes in Okay, interesting. So focus is probably a good word for that because I hear it getting more articulate as it goes. Um, 
you know, if we move our knob back, things get a little bit distorted, visually blurry. So it, it makes sense what they're doing. I'm hearing some EQ stuff in here. One more time, let me play that, that phrase again, and then I'll play it the next time with it cranked wide open. So here's all the way back, not default. This is all the way back and, you know, should be a little fuzzy. Here we go. From the weight of these woes in my mind. All the way open. From the weight of these woes in my mind. So it gets a little nasally, but a little more present and a little clearer. Uh, so focus makes sense. Let me go back to default and I'm just going to see if I can turn it up and find a setting I like. From the weight of these woes in So if I wanted a, a thin kind of rap vocal that was um, mid-range focus, like high mid-range focus kind of thing, had some presence to it, was a little distorted, I can see where this is handy. Um, if I bypass the plug-in, here's our original again. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Yeah. With the plug-in. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Yeah, so I've got a distorted, very upper mid-range focused vocal. Um, let's go over to our EQ section to the right of that and see what happens. And uh, while I'm going through this next section, let me know what you guys think so far of what we've seen with the rider and the compression section. So on to the EQ. Here we go. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Okay, so here's without EQ. From the weight of these woes in my mind. With? From the weight of these woes in my mind. So I can kind of bring back some of that bottom, but I feel like I'm getting a scooped vocal where the mid range is being cut out of it. Uh, I've got saturation happening. Um, there's saturation, there's a pretty steep EQ thing happening before the compressor. The rider is doing some stuff. So there's a lot of processing happening with only the three modules so far. I want to turn off the rider and just see what happens to it. Here we go. From the weight of these woes in my mind. With the rider. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Without. From the weight of these woes in So it's really bringing up the breath stuff, and that could just be a matter of me tweaking the, the settings better on the rider uh, for what it should be focusing on. It's starting to make me feel like I want some more control in here, like almost um, some things to duck. Uh, but the whole point of this plugin is to keep it simple, which brings me to another thought. And uh, the... One of the big features of this is that it's zero latency. And I think that a lot of the way that I'm, I'm kind of seeing like the way the plugin was developed and everything is that it would really shine in a tracking situation, especially on like a hip hop session or a pop vocal. Uh, you'd have zero latency and you're getting to a sound like this pretty quick. The danger with this that I see is because it's so processed, if this is what you're listening to right off the bat from a raw mu vocal microphone, you have to be careful that you get the vocal sounding good before you would put this on because it's not telling you the truth about what's coming into it for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, you can bypass and listen to the truth, but uh, I would definitely say if you end up using this on tracking, you would want to get a good vocal sound dialed in first. Uh, so let's go on and see what's going on with the effects sections. So the effects being baked into the plugin like this, again, like that really kind of leans toward the tracking aspect of it, um, where it's like, we just need to get a vibe going really fast. 
So let's see what the doubler sounds like. Here we go. I'm going to start at zero and bring it up on the mix knob. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Yeah. How will we get by when the lights are? Yeah, so kind of like a classic micro pitch, micro shift, uh, H910 kind of feel, just doing a, a stereo double with some modulation on it. There's a little bit of pitch modulation happening between each side. Um, that's all pretty cool and, and useful. It sounds good. Let's try bringing the stereo back. Uh, Joke, to answer your question, yeah, we're going to try this on another vocal, which is not or not so baked in to begin with in a, in a few minutes here. Um, I've got one that is uh, sort of a blues session. Uh, female vocal, it's awesome, it's super dynamic, so we're gonna see how, especially how that rider will deal with it, because um, it's it's a very, very dynamic vocal. So let's keep going with the rider and try to bring back the stereo image, here we go. From the weight of these woes in my mind Yeah, how will we get by When the lights out and the streets are on fire and we'll blend it in from zero. From the weight of these woes in my mind. Yeah. How will we get by when the lights out and the streets on? So here's something that's kind of interesting. Um, if you look at the look at the percent values as I'm turning the knob, this is no in no way indicative of where my knob position is, because I'm at 20% when I'm at 12 o'clock. Uh, I don't get to 50% until I get to about 3 o'clock, and then it just goes up exponentially from there, which is very smart because uh, this gives you a lot of playroom in the range that you would actually want to be in if you're using this, especially in a tracking situation. You don't want to crank up the, the mix knob because the artist would be freaked out in their headphones and it'd be really weird. So I appreciate that they did that, and it's, it's also kind of a move... Um, like dummy proofing it in a way uh so yeah let's go from zero we'll just get a, a little bit of a sound so you can see i brought the stereo width in a little bit this is a verse vocal so i probably wouldn't put it as wide as a chorus vocal i would want it to live in a little bit you know a little bit more toward the center but not so in the center that it's just a mono feeling thing i'd want to bloom it out so i i think that this is pretty cool so far for this kind of music from the way Cool. I'm already thinking of what else I could use this on besides a vocal with that, that doubler effect. So uh, let's go on to the reverb. And I'm going to kill the doubler for now so we can just hear the verb. We'll start. They have a room and a plate. And we'll just listen to the default setting. So there's a filter. That doesn't change my awesome 8-bit graphics. And the mix doesn't change my 8-bit graphics. Uh, so here we go from the start. From the way to That's pretty cool. It makes it a little bit dimensional. Um, I like the sound of the room. Uh, let's go on to the plate. I will open the filter back up here. We'll put the mix back at 10%. Here's the plate. From the weight of these woes in my interesting flutter at the end um it's a it's a neat plate uh it's i think it's useful in a different way than than something like um you know like a an emt 140 or some of the more meticulously modeled plates uh that have more three dimensionality to them 
Um, this doesn't stretch way far back into the speakers for me. It's It feels a little bit more compact and up front, which again, stylistically, that makes sense to me that you wouldn't have like a huge lush plate that was, you know, reaching 50 miles back into the speakers. Um, so I understand why it would sound like that. That's an interesting sounding plate. Uh, it's a very long tail on that. Listen to the tail here. That's like a four and a half second kind of thing there. It's pretty long. Um, interesting. Cool. What do you guys think about the plate? Uh, yeah, so Primetime wants to see how it handles on CPU. So I've got, uh, this is a pretty big session with a lot of tracks, but I've only got this one open on here. Let's see what happens. I'm at 1% on an M1 Mac. Hold on now. Let's see. So if I bypass that second one. All right, here we go. I'm at 11%, 10%. It's chilling out. Here's the second one. The whole thing is that it's very light CPU. So there's 16. I don't think I'm doing a very scientific test right now. This is not, <laughs> this is not the way to do it. Uh, okay, so supposedly with that many instances on the exact same channel, I've jumped up to about 60%. I'm gonna mute this and hit play. Yeah, okay, so I was able to get my CPU usage up pretty quick, which is interesting. I'm also diming out the meters over there, so I think I'm causing some issues. Also, I don't think that you would ever put 10 spirits on one vocal track, so that's, that's not a good test. Let's just forget that ever happened. But we don't have editing because it's a live stream, so there you go. Uh, Cool. Let's keep going here and let's see if I can get something cool happen in between the doubler and the reverb. And then we're going to jump over to a different style of vocal. But before we do that, I want to take a look under a microscope at this thing and we're going to check out uh, exactly what's going on with those EQ curves and stuff. But yeah, let's just dial this in real quick, see if we get something usable. I'm going to bring back the reverb all the way, bring back the doubler, just see what we Yeah, cool. I, it's a pretty quick way to dial in a vocal. Um, I was doing it and talking the whole time, but I can see how you would sort of just fly through and dial these in all pretty quickly and have a vibe going. That can be really useful on a big session uh, if you got a lot to deal with. So let's see here. Okay, so I've got um, a couple tracks pulled up here. The first one is a signal generator, and my signal generator is blasting up pink noise at minus 9 dB, and that's feeding another track which has the Spirit on it and a Pro-Q3. So uh, let's just see how this is going here. So here's my Pro-Q3. The Spirit is in bypass right now, and I've got pink noise pulled up on the analyzer for the Pro-Q. I've gone into the settings here and I've set the tilt to 3 dB per octave. So I've done that because the tilt of pink noise is coming in the opposite way. So I'm just trying to get it to be somewhat flat on my analyzer here. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely CPU friendly. Awesome. Cool. So we've got it pretty flat and that's just the pink noise, no spirit. So I'm going to unbypass the spirit and we're hitting in the sweet spot. So we're cool there. And the rider, let's turn the rider on. There's no frequency change. There's nothing really happening EQ-wise there. But then if we turn on the compressor circuit, there's that high pass kind of thing that we're feeling with the dip. It looks like a little bit more of a dip in the low mids. 
And let me back the compression off here. So if I back it off as much as I can, we still have our EQ curve and it looks like a little dip up here at like 7.3K. Um, this is something I do with plugins that have an extreme effect like this. It's not something I do on every plugin, just um, this doesn't really change anything and you, you gotta dial things in with your ears for sure, despite what you're seeing on this thing, but it can help you to sort of internalize, okay, when I use the Spirit and I engage the compressor, I know that I'm gonna have a low mid drop and a bit of a high pass filter going on with some other things happening in the top. And that's useful knowledge because something that might be cool with this, because it's got a doubler and a reverb built in, might be like a synth pad, right? So if I have like a really muddy synth pad, I'm gonna remember that all of this stuff is going on inside of the Spirit that it has a really cool doubling effect and a really cool reverb effect. And I might pull this up on synth, even though it's made for vocal. Um, so this is something that I do once in a while if I just want to see what's happening with the plugin um, and have some sort of visual feedback or confirmation to what my ears are hearing. I'll just put pink noise um, through the plugin and then load it up on the analyzer. Again, like 3 dB tilt inside of that. And I'll just kind of see how things behave. So let's, let's crank the compression and see what happens. And it looks like just got some more level, which is cool. I'm seeing gain reduction up there. Our eyes are getting bigger on our face, which is really cool. I love these meters. And let's try, uh, we'll put that at default, and then let's play around with this focus knob. So I'm going to go all the way down. And it looks like that thing up at 7K went away. So if I bring it up, see that dip at 7 right in here? I don't really care about that. That's not what I was hearing when I was turning the focus knob up earlier. Um, but it's just interesting to know. A lot of essing happens there, so you might be turning down some essing. And it gets more intense. And then it looks like there's another one back at like 500 or so. Yeah. So And our low mids actually are, yeah, watch in here as I turn it up. The low mids go down as well. Which is all in line with what we were hearing. Get a little bit of low end bump. Cool. Okay. So that's good to know. Let's turn the compressor off and let's put the EQ in and let's just see what's going on with these bands. I did feel like I was able to bring back a lot of the body that might have been bugging me from the, the harsh cut, uh, the high pass cut and the low mid dip on the um, compressor. I felt like I was able to get a lot of that back with this EQ. So I'm going to crank this up to... It says 12 dB on the knob, but on our analyzer, this is not a scientific test, not, not like a super thorough way of checking this out. This is just a very quick, dirty way of doing it. And I'm seeing a little less than 6 dB of bump on there. So I don't know if our numbers are right. They might be. Let's see, if I do the dip, when I say dip, you dip, we dip. Uh, we go down about minus 3 dB. And it looks like that's reaching up to like 300-ish. And then let's do the same with the high band. Cranking it all the way, I got about a 6 dB bump. Bringing it all the way down, minus 12 in the knob equals probably about minus three again. Yeah, about minus three again. And it reaches back all the way to about 4K or so. And then it looks like there's a little resonant bump right below it, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I'll go with not. Cool. Okay, that's good to know about the EQ. Kind of like a Poltec feeling sort of thing with the bands. Um, doubler and reverb. Guess we could check out. Uh, let's crank up the doubler. Not seeing a whole lot of like, a whole lot of important stuff there. Doesn't matter. Let's go to the reverb. Just see what the filter's doing. Crank this guy up. Okay, so when I crank it up, the reverb's got a nice high roll off. That's cool if we do the filter roll off. It does what it says. Awesome. Cool. Good to know. That's about as far as I would go with this um, in any situation. Just like, okay, am I like what I'm hearing? I just want to see it on a meter and just, you know, kind of verify. So let's move on to our next example. We're going to go over to a much more natural sounding vocal from the start. This one is not processed with a lot of tune or anything on it on the beginning. It might have had some light compression. It was tracked by Mick Buzowski. This is a song called Jealousy from Brandy and the Alexanders. Uh, if you're a Pure Mix member uh, or seen our content, you've likely heard this song before. It's a really good song. 
and let's check out this vocal. We'll play it. This section has a ton of dynamics in here, so we're just going to check this out. Here we go. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Why you make me look so green in the eye? Why you overpower me? Okay, so a couple of things about that vocal from the jump. Nothing's on it right now. Uh, it's got a little bit of a mask on it. Like there's a little bit of a towel over it. It's it's not super brilliant. Um, little low mid build up maybe. Very dynamic, especially at the end there. Uh, and maybe we'll go a little further for our example. We'll listen to just the first line of this one more time. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Why you make me look so green in the eye? Why you overpower me? Cool. All right. So let's bring the spirit up. And we got this in the factory default settings. Let's check out the rider and see if we can get something smoother happening. Here we go. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Okay, so the compressor's on by default. I'm gonna turn that off. Back to just the rider. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Why you make me look so green in the eye? Okay, so I'm just playing with the speed and the floor on this, and I'm trying to find something that feels somewhat natural. Here we go. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Why you make me look so green in the eye? Oh, you overpower me, so instinctive. Why you gotta make me feel so with the floor knob, I'm just looking for the noise floor of the track on here. So I'm going to hit play. Why you gotta make me? You can hear the bleed from the room on this. If I, um, you won't hear it if I turn the, the thing off, but there's some bleed coming from the room. This is a live track vocal. So there's some drum bleed and all that. I don't want Ryder like bringing up the drum hits in between vocal phrases. So I'm looking for a good setting on the noise floor so it won't engage. Why you gotta make me feel so? There we go. Okay, and then our speed. Let's see what happens with one millisecond. Why you gotta make me feel so? And then ten wide open. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Yeah, so that's a lot more natural. Let's go um, zero percent on the rack. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? And then their default is 70. Let's hear. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Yeah, cool. That's a little bit more controlled. So let's move on. Let's go to compression. And I'm gonna put it in the track here. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Why you make me look so green in the eye? Oh, you overpower me so instinctively. No matter where I run, I just can't overcome. I know that you're lying to me, that the grass ain't so green. I know it isn't so. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? You make me look so green in the eye. Oh, you overpower me so instinctively. No. So, uh, in a tracking situation, this is interesting. In a mixing situation, I would need way more control over this compressor to dial it in, I feel. Uh, just because, like, the release times feel a little bit weird to me, the attack times, I'm getting like some sharp consonant stuff. Uh, 
but in a tracking situation where you're just trying to get going again with like a pop singer, as long as you made sure that your vocal was good before using this, I can see how you could get there quickly. I'm missing the body because of all of the EQ stuff that's happening on this. And I want to play with the focus knob before I go to the EQ. I'm going to play with the focus knob and just see, because I think that we're hearing saturation as we're turning this up. Uh, I want to look for something natural given the style of music. So let's see what happens. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Why you gotta make me feel so... So that's kind of nasally. And then minus 50. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Why you make me look so green in the eye? Oh, you overpower me. So I might, I might live around there. Uh, let's see if we can get some body back in the vocal. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Why you make me look so green? Just moving quickly, that would be fine, but then it feels a little muffled now. I'm going to go to the chorus section because I want to hear the cymbals a little more. And I'm going to dial in the high end of the vocal accordingly. I know that you're lying to me, that the grass ain't so green. I know it isn't so, but you won't let me go. Oh, 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 jealous. I know that you're lying to me, that the grass ain't so green. I know. I definitely feel like there's interplay between the EQ and the focus knob and finding a sweet spot for that. I know that you're lying to me That the grass ain't so green I know it isn't so But you won't let me go Oh, 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 jealous I know that you're lying to me That the grass ain't so green I know it isn't so yeah, it's interesting. I, I feel like I'm scooped and then I want to bring some more focus up and then that makes me want to, you know, bring some body back and all that. But there's with a little bit of massaging, it's getting interesting. Let's bring in the doubler. I know that you're lying to me That the grass ain't so green I know it isn't so But you won't let me go So I really appreciate the stereo knob. I just realized that as I was going through... Um, yeah, I, I want to hear the effect as wide as it can, and then I want to bring it back to a space that feels natural for the track. So that was interesting. I just kind of did that intuitively, and I think I really like that. So I'll do that one more time. I'll just open it all the way up stereo, and we'll bring this out. What, ha what I heard was that it felt too wide, and I wanted to kind of bring it into the speakers a little bit. I know that you're lying to me That the grass ain't so green I know it isn't so So another thing, uh, this track is also not mixed. This is just a multi-track with a little bit of balancing going on. So things would end up being wider in this mix, and then I might want to push the doubler out. But um, in general, I kind of wanted to bring it back into the package, and I really like having the stereo knob put right in there. I kind of wish um, some of the other doublers that I use had that feature, because a lot of times I'll reach for my pan knobs, and I have to go through and, you know, I'll bring up my output window and then I'll link my pan knobs and then I'll set the inversion so that they'll move opposite of each other. That's like three steps, whereas it's really nice to just have the stereo control right on the plugin as I'm dialing in my doubler. So I might have found a new doubler inside of this. That's really cool. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's just, I'll do a little bit more on the doubler and then I'm going to move on to the reverb. I know that you're lying to me That the grass ain't so green I know it isn't so I know that you're lying to me That the grass ain't so green I know it isn't so But you won't let me I'm hearing a lot of warble and modulation on this um, Which is interesting I'm wondering if that's a process that's timed to the DAW uh, Listening one more time Kind of note. There's some delay in there too. Just... 
That is an interesting cocktail. Okay, let's go back to the room. Yeah, interesting. There's some delay in there, um, which is, you know, technically what reverbs are. But uh, let's see if we can dial in a cool sound in the room. I know that you're lying to me, that the grass ain't so green. I know it isn't so, but you won't let me go. Oh, 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 jealous. I know that you're lying to me, that the grass ain't so green. I know it isn't so. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to be able to tweak the times on that, that reverb. Uh, it feels too long. Uh, this is one of the cases where I would want a big lush 3D plate um, and I'm hearing the warbling, I'm hearing all the movement inside of this verb. So for this track, this probably wouldn't work, but maybe back for the other pop track, it was fine. Uh, so cool. Let's see what would happen with this on a Wurlitzer. So we'll, um, we'll just bring back the mix on that a little bit on that vocal. I'm going to leave it on, but then let's take a listen to this Wurlitzer track. And I'm just going to move quick here and see if I can get a fun sound. You can hear that distortion coming out more on this. I mean, it's a distorted whirly anyway, but you can kind of hear it more with the focus on. Yeah, so there's a case where like cutting some of the low mids was really kind of cool. And then I liked what the doubler was doing. Um, I was able to bring back some of the body in the EQ that I wanted, get some top end sparkle. The plate was interesting uh, for it as well. So yeah, I mean, that was like a fast way to dial in a very quick sound on something that's not even a vocal. Um, I think I really like this doubler too, because there was some chorusing going on, a little bit of like pitch stuff i mean it's like a wobbly whirly anyway but there was some kind of wobble going on in there that i liked so i think i found a really cool doubler and i like the room reverb on there so there's two modules out of the plugin that you could use completely independently of any of the compression stuff and then again i think that where this thing would shine for me is in a tracking session especially a hip-hop one after i've gotten a vocal sound that i, I kind of dig if I needed to give a little bit more vibe, maybe this would be cool to pull up and just quickly dial something in and see if the artist is connecting with it or not, and then move on. It's a lot faster than going through, you know, um, the sort of chain setup that I have now, where it's like I've got some auxes going on and I gotta unbypass sends and blend things in and all that, and then send all that stuff to the headphone. I can see why people would like this for tracking for sure. And in some mix applications, I think it could be really cool too. There, I would definitely find myself wanting some more control over it. Like I want to be able to, um, you know, open up another panel of, uh, you know, some more controls in there for attack release times and, and a little bit more of that stuff. Like the reverb, I wouldn't be able to time that very well with tracks, but in things where I just need a reverb for tracking, sure, that's cool. 
Uh, what do you guys think so far? How are you guys digging it? Uh, so Harold asks, do you set a reverb or do you also automate reverb and tracks? Both. Um, I, I like to time my reverbs to a musical value if I can without going overboard on it. So sometimes you just want a reverb to float in space and just feel natural. And then other times, like if it's a snare reverb, I want that snare to have a note value. So the tail is extending it out, but that's, you know, lengthening the snare or something like that. So I'll, I'll kind of time reverbs to, to where it makes sense for them musically. Um, just depending on the song and the track and all that stuff. But yeah, with this one, I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, but they give you the option of like the shorter room and then the plate, which is cool. All right. So let me know what you guys think. Yeah. Ghost Bl <laughs> That's awesome. Ghost Blossom Recordings uh, gets the quote of the day. It sounds like a plugin. It's a plugin, <laughs> which is cool. Uh, Martin said you can always sidechain your reverb. That's true. Uh, yeah, so let me know what you guys are thinking in there. And then also let me know what you guys would like to see next on the Great Big Plugin Show. If there's some other plugins you'd like to check out. And do you guys want to hear this thing on any any other instruments before we get out of here? Let me know. Um, I think I'm going to go back to Light Shine Through while I'm waiting for you guys to respond. And I'm going to look for, I think I've got a pad in here that we could check this out on. And yeah, I found a pad earlier and threw a plug-in on there for myself. So let's go over to this guy and we will listen to this thing on a pad and see if my hunch is right that this could be cool. Assuming I've got a pad with some, some meat in it. All right, I'm gonna mute our vocal and let's just listen to the instrumental. We're listening to this pad. Yeah, we'll do this section. Here it is out of solo. I'm going to mute that delayed vocal track here. This guy's a little muddy, let's check him out. Here we go, these are some guitars. This might be cooler. So it's in our bridge section. Okay, so that's really interesting because the producer has that super filtered out and this would be the kind of thing that could get you fired from a mix if you go the opposite direction and you suddenly clean it up and get rid of all the the towel that was thrown over it to make it blend into the track and everything, um, which I'm totally able to do with this, which is great because there's plenty of times that you do have to do that. Uh, but yeah, it could get you fired from a mix. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, one more time. Here's Bypass. Uh, there's a phaser in there and we're making it freak out. Check this out. Let me go all the way to zero on the doubler. Here we go. See, sometimes you can throw it on something it's not intended for and you can end up finding out really cool tricks. Here's a, like, 
bit crushy phaser guy that's distorted. Which really, to go back to Ghost Blossom Recordings thing, uh, it makes it sound like a plugin. All right, um, let's check out some reverb on that. Now we're just getting crazy, but that's interesting. You can, um, yeah, you can kind of bend and twist this thing to get some interesting artifacts. Okay, so um, Ghost said he'd like to hear it on bass. Let's see. Uh, I think there's an 808 bass in here that might be interesting. And if you wanted it on bass guitar, let me know. We could go back to Jealousy and hear it. Okay, so the doubler, if I go to zero, I don't think that there's any low passing happening on the side. Yeah, it sounds like the whole bass range is going wide with it. That's interesting. That's the first thing I went for. So yeah, I mean, that's where, um, kudos to the developers for keeping it simple because again, this is supposed to be a vocal plugin. We're like using it out of context here, but um, this is the kind of thing where you'd be like, mm, if I only had a low pass and a high pass filter on the doubler as well. And then before you know it, this thing has 45 knobs. So in a way it's really cool that they kind of stuck to their guns there. Somewhere out there in the universe, there is the reverb police coming after me for throwing reverb on a bass. Oh, well. Is there a basketball in here? I hear a basketball. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's that's interesting. Um, could get some some weird stuff happening there. Let's see. Uh, Harold says, "I love delays." <laughs> nice. Uh, I love lamp. Sounds fantastic with more and less reverb. Yeah, nice. Cool. Uh, let's see. Space Force is the one the way. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> cool. Uh, what else do we got here? Let's. Somebody said it must sound good on snare. Let's hear it on a snare. And my apologies to uh, the developers for totally not, you know, taking this off the beaten path here and throwing it on stuff other than a vocal. All right, here it is on snare. Here's our snare bypass. Compressor engaged. Hey, that's a cool transient. That's a really cool transient. Do a little focus.
started here. Ended up here. So yeah, you got to be careful. You could get fired. But um, yeah, I mean, maybe there is a use for that parallel. Like uh, if you dialed in that crack that the compressor was giving it, maybe don't add the body back like I did on the EQ. And then you could play around with the doubler, you know, reverb thing. But that could be a pretty neat parallel compressor. That's pretty cool. I dig it. Uh, Tyler asked, does it do any filtered vocal effects or can you recommend a good one for that? Man, um, it doesn't allow you to filter more than what's already here and there's no delay on it. Uh, but Manny Marikin's, uh set of plugins is really cool for that. Especially the MM delay, the Manny Marikin delay from Waves, I think. Uh, Echo Boy is amazing. That one's great. Um, there's a whole bunch. Guys, help me out here in the chat. I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not a finger snap. Side stick cool. Right. Um, let me know some other cool vocal filtered effects that you guys know of that are neat. Those are two that I love, though. I mean, Echo Boy and Manny's delay thing, I can get most things that I need to out of. That's really good. Uh, I also love the Arturia suite of delays. Those are really cool. They're more like vintage analog, you know, almost like Memory Mans and Space uh, space Echoes, stuff like that. Space Echoes are also awesome. Echoplexes are awesome. Any of those plugins. Um, but in terms of like really fast... There's one called the Drip, I think, that does that stuff really quick. That might help you out, Tyler. Um, Chad, help him out. Cool. Let me know if you guys want to hear this on anything else. Otherwise, I think that we've done it. I'm going to wait a couple more seconds, uh, see what you guys come up with. But yeah, that's the Spirit from Cradle Audio. We'll go back here to the browser. You guys can check them out. Cradle.app. It's pretty neat. Uh, again, I think like the best, again, like the best case for this would be in a tracking session. Um, once you've already established that you have a usable vocal, you dig it. This could be cool for just getting some vibe really quick. I think that's how it's kind of intended. Uh, zero latency, low CPU usage, built-in effects. It's got fast tracking moves uh, kind of written all over it. And hey, the, the website's really fun. They've got this whole like 3D image built up. Um, man. That had to be a long process to make that 3D model there. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, Martin asked, do I have something more orchestral? Um, I don't load it into this session. I don't think that there's strings on this song. Let me see here. Let me go back to Pro Tools. There might be strings on this song. Let's see. Is that what this was? Okay, let me get rid of the, the snare sound. This is kind of, or this is just a part in this song. It's not really what you're looking for, I don't think, but we'll do it anyway. Here we go, Spirit. I'm just gonna dial up something fast. Here, uh, we'll play it in bypass first. So I'm getting it into their target here.
Yeah, so we started here. Here we are now. So it's making the mids pop um, the same way that it was doing to the vocal on that. It might be a little bit of a weird thing. And that, you know, brings me back to the point of now I want to mid control on the CQ so I could further tailor it, but it's, you know, being cut that way because of the EQ that was before the compressor. Also, again, it's tuned for vocals. Um, so it's, it's interesting. I mean, it, like it would be fun in a mix if you're just looking for something to kind of mess things up, it'd be fun to, you know, throw this on something else. And that also brings up another point of like, you might have a plugin that you try it out for the first time. It's it's something that like you imagine would sound great on drums or you imagine it would sound great on guitar or whatever. If it doesn't work out there, try it on something completely random. This is advice um, that I got from John Paterno. Try it on something completely random and see what it does. It might be awesome and it might be better at that than what it's meant to do. Um, not that that's the case here, but like it's kind of interesting to do that that kind of stuff sometimes. Cool. All right. Uh, what else do you guys want to hear? Okay. Yeah. Nice. We got a lo-fi setting on JST. Howard Benson vocals is cool from Yo Cannon. That'd be an interesting one to check out. Do you guys have any plugins you want me to do in two weeks when we're back for another episode? Let me know in the chat if you do. Until then, I think that we've done it. This is The Spirit from Cradle. Thanks for watching another episode of The Great Big Plugin Show. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Let me know in the chat some other plugins. Let me know in the comments. And of course, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Cool. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. That was fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.